Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling the June 2018 Village of, Boor, uh, Village of Osting Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing to order. I ask you to please turn off your cell phones. If, if those in the audience, uh, for those in the audience, please do not engage in activities that might distract from the board or the applicants or their respective representatives. Please do not engage in loud or extended conversations during the proceedings. Any conversation by audience members should be conducted outside the hearing room. At the end of the applicant's presentation, the public will be given an opportunity to speak on relevant issues involving the application. As you're all probably, uh, well, we have some new people in front of us today, but uh, we have changed some of the procedures and policies concerning the Village uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. We will no longer accept incomplete applications. We take responsibility for the current system and have committed to working with each applicant currently in the pipeline and all future applicants. Each applicant will have a ap pre-application meeting as well as additional meetings Can you hear me? Oh, I got it. Each applicant will have a pre-application meeting as well as additional meetings to confirm that each application is complete, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. Each application must applicant must follow the cap must follow the calendar to start the process. This is not a guarantee that you will be placed on the agenda, but it will start the process. Our planning consultants and building department will review your application for completeness. The, application or the, the applicant or the representative will receive a list of items that need to be submitted before they will be placed on the agenda. It depends on, it depends on each, each applicant to submit complete applications or ask the questions of our, of our consultants or the Village of Austin Building Department to move the application along. I'm not going to read this whole thing because I um, read it the last time, but all escrows must be up to date and paid in full. Um, and so at the end, to end that, we will be actually adjourning an item this evening that we're not quite sure should be on the agenda in the first place. Um, so, and lastly, we will, be opening, we will be opening and closing the public hearings after each item. The board will deliberate and, if appropriate, make their decision. We ask you in advance for your understanding as we make these changes and, again, appreciate your constructive su suggestions. Okay. So, number one on our agenda this evening is ZBA 2116. This has gone through several public hearings. Um, yes, sir? Yeah. I represent the applicant, so I was going to stand up and address the board when you got done. Okay. Not too so, okay. so go ahead if you want to address the board. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Joseph Stargiati, and I represent the Baker Brothers, the applicant on this uh, application. Their uh, architect, J.B. Hernandez, advises that he made an additional uh, submission by the submission date uh, for this meeting, and he'd like to comment on it. So I'd like to just ask him to come up and comment on uh, his uh, additional submission and uh, advise you what he thinks I'm not can sure. add to the... Uh, did, we get, did we get additional submissions? Yeah, we received a revised plan. It was a completely revised plan yeah. now, right? Yes, yeah, so the application, they haven't made a new application, they just made a supplemental submission. So we're not going to... Um, no. We're not, we're not, I'm not talking about that revised uh, plan. We're not going to move forward with that revised plan. But he submitted it, but he, that's not what I'm talking about. He advises that he has some uh, material that he had previously submitted that he wants to comment on. He's, he's in favor. Well, we're not, you know, we were not going to open up this public hearing. We were just ready to take a vote on this whole application this evening. So I'm not sure why, if this is something that you've already given to the board and we've already reviewed it. He says he's got something new to say. Are you saying that we're not allowed? You, you want to entertain his comment to the board? What? Why? Why would we have to? I don't know. Do you have to or not? I'm asking you to entertain his application to the board. Maybe you can ask your counsel. If it's a brief comment from Mr. Hernandez, we do. We did get. We did get documents before. But other than a, uh, oops, excuse me. It's 
make sure we're on. So, oh, here we go. Other than a, other than a, no, <laughs> Four. this is, no, I'm just going to take this and do it this way. Okay. Other than a brief comment, I think that's all with the board, because we did close the public we hearing did close the public last hearing. time. Yes, the second time. Correct. The second time. Is it a brief comment? I just wanted to walk. I just wanted to walk the board through the that we made a comparison of the scale, the density, and the volume of the proposal. Can you hear? Can you hear him, Catherine? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, for example, the the density of our properties. 30 units per acre. The adjacent property is uh, over 50 units per acre, and our density is all within this, it's the lowest in the area for the multifamily. And the same we show the building scale. Uh, what we're proposing the no variance or the two variance uh, building and Clinton Terrace adjacent to us. And we did the same in a 3D format that I know you had at some point. Okay. Thank you. So, Madam Chair, we appreciate that there are five people here tonight, so we are going to ask for a vote. I'm going to ask that the board, there are four variances requested, I'm going to ask the board to vote on each one individually. So, so, Ms. I'm so sorry about this. So, um, Mr. Cajon? I'm happy to comment on that first. Chairman, uh, the board is not obligated in any way to treat each uh, variance individually and can indeed. I'm, I'm going to talk real loud because, and I can do that. The board is not obligated to treat each individual variance, but in fact, because this is an application, the board can consider all of the variances requested as one does not require four separate votes on each variant. Indeed, uh, there are numerous cases in the state of New York where uh, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals singular vote on multiple zoning variants is considered credible and appropriate. All that's necessary is that the board has to consider the elements for variances, but it is not required to have an individual vote on each individual variance that is before the board. All I'm asking is that you consider doing it that way so that, for example, if you were to grant one or two but deny one or two or three of them, that would give my clients some insight into perhaps a new application that, uh, that would address the issues that you may be addressing. So we're, we're, we, were, we, we couldn't get any guidance any other way. We're looking for an individual vote so that perhaps they could come back with a new application that would address the concerns of the board later. But I appreciate your time, and please, uh, we, we do call for the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, the board is uh, quite familiar with this matter, but for the record, let me just go through some of the timeline in terms of when this matter first appeared and what has gone on over the period of time. This matter first appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals on November 7th of 2016. Uh, at that time, uh, the architect, J.B. Hernandez, appeared. Uh, there was some discussion with regard to what was going before the planning board. Uh, and at that meeting, uh, Penelope Morgan, an attorney and a representative for Clinton Terrace Apartments uh, at 70 Croton Avenue, adjacent to the property, spoke in opposition to the application. Uh, her concern and her client's concern was with regard to the density aspect of the proposal, Clinton Terrace being located directly behind the subject property. The uh, application was next before this board on December 13th of 2016. At that time, uh, Mr. Hernandez indicated that there would be a reduction from four to two variances. As I will explain, there are actually requested for four variances in this matter. Uh, there were discussions again about the process before the planning board, and the matter was adjourned until the planning board made its CICRA findings. Uh, the matter next appeared before this board uh, at the January 2017 meeting, and it was adjourned as there had been no determination yet by the planning board. Uh, at the meeting on April 12th of 2017, uh, architect Hernandez against, again appeared on behalf of the application. Uh, he updated the board with regard to the status before the planning board. 
uh, and uh, noted that they were working on finalizing the number of variances that would be required and hope to be back before the zoning board soon. Matter next appeared before this board on June 13th, 2017, at which time there was a request for an adjournment made by Mr. Hernandez. Next appearance was back on July 11th of 2017. At that time, there was a referral back to the Board of Trustees as there was some question as to whether or not this was more appropriately to be considered as a, an amendment to the zoning code rather than a variance application. Uh, the applicant then appeared before the Zoning Board of Appeals on September 12th of 2017, this time represented by counsel Mr. Stargiotti. Uh, Mr. Stargiotti had prior to that provided a letter to the board detailing the uh, basis for uh, his client's application and the variances that were going in there. Mr. Stargiotti noted that the Bakers had owned the property uh, since 1992 and not 2009, as was indicated uh, uh, in error in the letter. Uh, and he referenced the prior z uh, rezoning in 2009 as the area had originally been a B2 zone uh, and was rezoned to the MF uh, multifamily 2 zone. Uh, and uh, there were further comments by Mr. Hernandez at that meeting. Uh, and uh, again, as the planning board had not yet uh, indicated, while the applicant wanted the zoning board to vote on the variances at that time, the position of the zoning board was that until there was a secret judgment by the planning board, there would be no determination. Uh, next appearance was one month later on October 10th. Uh, and at that point, uh, since the planning board had not yet acted, the matter was adjourned at that time. Uh, on November 14th, 2017, the matter again appeared before the board. Uh, 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 Deputy Corporation Counsel Malone advised the board that the application was still before the planning board and that no action would be taken until that time was done. Uh, Mr. Baker, William Baker, addressed the board at that time and indicated that they were in the process of replying to suggestions from the planning consultant and engineering consultant Kellard Sessions. Next appearance was on December 12th, 2017, and at that point the matter was again adjourned. Uh, it was also adjourned at the January 2018 meeting. February 2018 was the next extensive discussion with regard to this application. Again, Mr. Stargiotti appeared uh, on behalf of the uh, applicant. There were comments made by former planning director uh, uh, Lynn Brooks Avni with regard to the particular application and what the uh, status was with regard to the, uh, to the application. Uh, at the time of uh, this particular meeting in February, uh, Mr. Stargiotti again uh, referenced the uh, purchase of the property in 1986 uh, and, its uh, and its client's current application. Uh, there were references to the substantial nature of the uh, variance that was being requested, specifically with regard to the, uh, 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 the size of the area that is involved, the area variance, uh, and with regard to the both lot size and with regard to the width. Uh, at that time, at that meeting, there was a motion by Member Florestal to close the public hearing, which was seconded by Mr. Meyer, uh, and that was approved by a four to nothing vote. Uh, and uh, there was then further discussion by Ms. brooks Avni with the board as to the particular uses that would be permitted in the MF2 zone. Those uses include single family detached, single family attached, two family detached and attached, as well as multifamily. Uh, as well as there was a discussion of some of the conditional uses that would be permitted. Uh, uh, there would be, uh, uh, but there were numerous non-permitted uses within the multifamily zone relating particularly to retail sales, restaurants, etc. cetera. Uh, uh, the chairperson at that particular meeting also noted that in the area that surrounds uh, the proposed development, uh, there are mixed use buildings. Uh, and except for the two apartment complexes behind, and that it's a commercial corridor, uh, and that the other members uh, were, were aware of this as well. Uh, and uh, the next appearance was uh, one month later at March th on the March 13th meeting. Again, Mr. Stargiotti appeared, uh, and there was an issue there with regard to notice and notification to be sent out. Uh, there was discussions with regard to the size of the building, with regard to the particular lot that's being involved here. I'll get into that in some more detail as I proceed. Uh, there was a discussion with regard to the number of parking spaces and uh, with, uh, with the particular neighborhood 
uh, would have uh, with regard there. Mr. Baker did appear before the board at that time and indicated that the rezoning had made it so that he could not build anything at that particular location. Uh, and he indicated with regard that he had been before the planning board uh, on, uh, on other occasions as well. Uh, it should be noted that by the time of the next meeting in April, the planning board had uh, not only uh, declared itself as lead agency, but had also issued a negative declaration with regard to this particular project. Uh, the next appearance was on April 10th of 2018. Uh, there was a summary provided by former planning director uh, Brooks Avni, including the elements required with regard to uh, area variances. There were further discussions by uh, zoning board members with regard to traffic uh, at the particular location uh, where this was uh, projected to be. Uh, there was some discussion with regard to uh, what is being built at the location and why this particular size is being built at that location. At that meeting, uh, Mr. Cal Fishbein, whose family has run Clinton Terrace Apartments, appeared at the meeting. Uh, he indicated that uh, this was uh, one of the uh, later ideas by the owners to, to take this particular piece of land uh, and to use it. In Mr. Fishbein's view, it would have a, a, a large undesirable impact. Uh, due to the fact that it is half of the minimum lot size uh, and uh, approximately half of the minimum lot width. Uh, and, did, and in his view, it was not a suitable project for that particular piece of uh, property. Uh, there was then a discussion by Corporation Council with regard to the board's <coughs> ability to use its own observations of the properties as evidence in terms of making the determination as to whether or not an area variance could be granted uh, and, that, uh, substantial ev and whether or not there was substantial evidence presented on that. Uh, last appearance was one month ago, on May 8th of 2018. Uh, there was uh, uh, a brief, uh, brief uh, presentation or brief reference uh, by Andy Rodriguez of 70 Croton Avenue. This was after notification was sent out to neighboring property owners with regard to the, uh, to the application. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez expressed opposition to the project, concerned about congestion, noise, and air pollution uh, in the area. Additionally, Penelope Morgan again appeared. She is the attorney for Clinton Terrace uh, Apartments, and she expressed her opposition with regard to the potential negative impacts on both their property and building as they are adjacent to the site. Uh, at that time, uh, Member Bailing made a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Florestal seconded, and that was carried by a vote of four to nothing. That's the procedural history with regard to this. Now, with regard to the particular uh, variances that are being sought by the applicant, there are four variances specifically. Uh, the first is with regard to lot size. The MF2 zone, minimum lot size is 40,000 square feet. Uh, the, actual, uh, the actual property here is 17,693 square feet requiring a variance of 22,307 square feet. Uh, there is also a request for a variance as to the, the lot width. The minimum size in the MF2 zone is 150 feet. The actual lot width for this lot is 85 feet. The variance requested would be 65 feet. There is also a variance requested for the front yard setback. Uh, the minimum is 40 feet. Uh, it is proposed to be 6 feet which would mean a variance of 34 feet would be requested. And the last variance would be a combined minimum side yard setback. Uh, for the MF2 zone, that is 60 feet. The proposal is 41.56 feet for a variance of 18.44 feet. Those are the four variances that are before this board. Uh, this property is located uh, on Croton Avenue. It does not have a numerical designation. Most of you will know it that it is next to the Valvoline uh, 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 oil chain shop. Uh, it is designated on the tax map as, of the village of Ossining as section 89.19, block 2, lot 17, in an MF2 uh, district zone. Uh, with regard to uh, area variances, uh, we can turn obviously both to our code, section 270-48, and village law, section 7-712B, uh, which are the, the elements to be considered and I will briefly go over those with the board so that we can all be, can all be refreshed with regard to that. Uh, for an area variance, where an applicant requests a variance of the area requirements of this chapter, the board may grant a variance in the application of the provisions of this chapter in the specific case. 
In making its determination, the board shall take into consideration the benefit to the applicant if the variance is granted as weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, welfare of the neighborhood or community of such grade. In making its determination, the board shall consider whether A, an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the area variance. B, the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. C, the requested area variance is substantial. D, the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental <coughs> conditions in the neighborhood or district. And E, the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the area variance. In determining this particular matter, uh, we will look at the different variances that have been requested, but I'd first like to just briefly go over what basically the courts have indicated with regard to this uh, of particular uh, area variances so that the court, uh, so that the board can, can be made aware. Uh, one thing that is important is that the, the zoning board's determination must have a rational basis and be supported by substantial evidence. And the courts have determined that a determination is rational if it has some objective, factual basis. So that's what we're dealing with here, an objective, factual basis. And uh, uh, local zoning boards have broad discretion in considering applications for variances and judicial review is limited to determining whether the action taken by the board was illegal, arbitrary, or an abuse of discretion. That was restated by the uh, Second Circuit, uh, Second Department uh, in the case of Campbell versus Town of Mount Pleasant Zoning Board of Appeals uh, in 2011. And it's important to note, as I stated to the board at a prior meeting, uh, personal observations of board members may be considered in determining whether or not uh, variances should be granted. Uh, in the matter of uh, Friedman versus Board of Appeals of the Village of Quag, which is another 2011 Second Department case, the court noted that board, a board member had observed that an alternative would have a detrimental effect on ocean views of neighboring properties and found that as a sufficient basis or a rational basis to deny the area variance that was requested in that particular case. Uh, it's also important to note that while general public uh, opposition is not considered a, an objective basis. Uh, evidence of impact by neighbors is important and can be considered by the board. Uh, and that is, that is more than mere generalized objections of neighbors. And you did have testimony in this case on a couple of occasions. That was a statement from the, uh, second de from the third department, which sits out of Albany, in the matter of Rosewood Home Builders versus Zoning Board of the Town of Waterford, and that's a 2005 decision. Also, importantly, in making its decision, the board can consider the impact of precedent for future decisions. Uh, particularly here, you're dealing with a particular lot that would be half the size of what is required in the MF2 zone, both with regard to total area size and with regard to width size. And as noted by the court, in matter of Genser versus Zoning Board of Appeals for the town of North Hempstead, again, second department, uh, the Zoning Board was entitled to consider the effect its decision would have as precedent on future, future matters. So that's another factor that the uh, court can consider. I've already told you that personal observations uh, are, 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 can be considered. Uh, so that's the cases that we can consider here. Let's look at the particular variances that are being requested. And one other point that I do want to make, it is not required that the board determine that each factor applies to each particular variance. But it's essentially the overall view of the variances. So it's not basically, do I look at all five factors for all four variances? Courts do not require that. You look at it overall to make, is there a rational determination by this board as to whether it exists? Let's look at the first particular variance, and that relates to uh, the size of the lot. It is uncontroverted that the lot here and the proposal that, that is presented uh, by William Baker is on a lot that is less than half the size 
uh, approved in the MF2 zone. That's the size of the lot, and that is all that they could build on would be the 17,693 square feet. So you'd be granting a variance uh, which has been acknowledged as substantial of greater than 50% in terms of what is the overall size of the particular lot. Uh, with size, similarly, the minimum is 150 feet. Uh, actual uh, is, is only 85 feet. But if we consider the elements that we have talked about specifically as to those two variances, uh, would there be a change in the character of the neighborhood? This board has observed the location and is familiar with that location. Those statements have been made. Uh, there has been testimony that has been presented as to, uh, and, and there's been statements made by board members as to what the surrounding area has in terms of commercial areas, in terms of you have the Valvoline, you have the Walgreens, you have the stores that are across the street on the other side of Croton Avenue. Or you do have the two apartment buildings in the back, the area that's where this building is, you have primarily commercial, particularly across the street, and as you go on both sides of Croton Avenue. Uh, so the question there is, would there be a change in the character of the neighborhood as it is viewed at this time in terms of this particular thing? Uh, can the applicant achieve uh, by some method other than an area variance? I, I should point out that the applicant had made a submission in May of a slightly smaller proposal that proposal is not before this board. The applicant's attorney has, in fact, advised me that they are not presenting that proposal to the board. So the issue is, have they showed that they can do something to that area that would not require all of the variances they have requested? That's something for you folks to look at in terms of that. Uh, the, two, the first two variances, as I said, air, the, the full size of the lot and the width size, that's what he's limited to by simply the nature of the particular area that's there. That's what it is. Uh, are the, are the variances substantial? You can look at it yourself. The first variance asks for 22,307 square feet of variance, more than 50%. The second variance for lot width asks for 65 feet. Uh, the mini, and, the mini, and, and the actual is only 85. The front yard setback is asking for a 34 foot variance. Uh, the minimum size is 40 feet. And for the combined minimum side yards, the setback is 60 feet. Uh, the variance requested here is 18.44 feet. So this board can look at that and determine that those would be substantial variances with regard to what is being requested. Also, there's a consideration. Will the, will the variances have an adverse effect or impact on the environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district? There have been comments by members of this board, both through their observations and, and here, with regard to issues relating to traffic, issues with regard to parking, issues with regard to size, as their impact with regard to that particular location. Uh, with regard to, uh, was the difficulty self-created? It was not self-created. Uh, the, uh, the applicant has acknowledged he purchased the property in the 1980s when the property was at that point zoned as B2. At that time, he could have built from property line to property line. It, the zoning was changed in 2009 with the adoption of the comprehensive plan and the changes in the zone. But since uh, the change occurred after he was the owner of the property, it's not a self-created situation. So those are the elements with regard to the variances that exist. Those are the elements, as I pointed out, with what the case law uh, points out. Uh, but again, this court, can, this this court, this board can consider uh, its own personal observations, the testimony that has come down, the size of the variances that are involved as a basis for coming up with its, with its decision on a rational basis as to whether or not to grant the area variances that are requested here. Thank you. Does anybody on the board have a comment? Yes, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, actually, I do. Um, Stuart, yes, sir. one issue. I just want to make sure I took proper notes. Did you Did you mention that the board, uh, where is that, the planning board gave a negative declaration? Yes, it did. Okay. Yes, it did. Just wanted to make sure. Right. So, um, we need to take a vote on this. We have, we have discussed it at length. It, we've, we've had open discussions. Um, I would like to hear a motion um, 
for denial of these variances. Motion to deny the variances requested. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So recorded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I just ask a procedural question? Is there going to be any, uh, what gets filed with the clerk of the village? Is it some more formal resolution or is it the minutes of this meeting? No. Yeah. Well, both minutes will be filed, but there will be a formal resolution that will be prepared and will be uh, executed by the chair at the next meeting. And, if that, the, and that is what actually will get filed because everything is done one month afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ZBA 0218 of uh, 49 Spring Street should not be on the agenda this evening. Um, you were the uh, applicant was requested to bring us back to bring more, back more information. Um, we have gotten no further information from from the applicant. You did two months ago. No. Yes. Well. Okay. Are you I, I, mean, I can no, say I, something, but I will be happy to. We haven't received anything for this, this, for this was meeting. Package that was the original package are you speaking of? No. This, this was a package that when we submitted, it was, I guess, when Brokers, um, Lynn was still here, the package did not get put into the meeting, so we were postponed because. You were, post, you, you were postponed for. Because you had, you, had request, you had requested, you were butting up to the aqueduct. Right. You had parking issues, and you had so size issues of your apartments, correct? Right. And we did. If, if I may, yes. Madam Chair, uh, in my packet, uh, there is a, a letter with documents from Mr. Hernandez uh, from dated April 24th, received in the planning department, April 24th. Yes. Uh, there was a, uh, that included a corrected zoning worksheet with regard to parking. Uh, it did, uh, it references confirmation of compliance with habitable space required. Uh, and then the last was copies of information regarding the old Croton Aqueduct. Uh, that would be the one area would I, where I would have some issues because what it appears to be is a, is a, is a map, but it, it does not sort of explain any of the legends on the map, and I think we needed more information as related to that. And I, I'm, I'm gathering that some of the board members or, 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 and our planning or consultant may not have actually seen this. So there's, there's a number of copies in the file that are much different. So well, it, let's go back to our new policies and procedures for the zoning board. This isn't going to be where we ask you. This isn't going to be where we ask you to come back over and over and over again. So what I strongly suggest you do is set up a meeting with the with our planning consultants and the building department and the attorney and make sure that you have all the information including the pro proper documentation about the aqueduct and then we'll put you on next month's agenda if you have everything because we do not have that information in front of us nor have you gone to a completion meeting with uh, our planning consultants which we changed last month you were here last month you heard us talk about it last month that you have to have these these uh, meetings with the planning, right, with the planning month, consultants. We will do that, but last month we were adjourned because the paperwork had not been received in time. So, yeah, right. we will. Okay, thank you. ZBA 0718 14 Osage Drive. They're seeking a parking variance. Uh, yes, when we were here last. Um, if you're, you're going to have to talk into your mic. Is it the back or not? There's a button on the top. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, shoot. Sure. Hello? Yeah, oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. All right, last time we were here, um, we decided to make a change and go for a uh, side yard parking variance. We, we had four feet, but we had uh, changed that, changed that, bless you, uh, changed it to one foot, 
so that we can get the cars further over to the side of the property as opposed to being in front. Can you cancel it? <laughs> yes, I shall. I apologize. Thank you. Okay, so, so so the property line is the is the wall. Is that wall there? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. And so what does the new, uh, so we have the revised application. Uh, correct. Right, and what we're looking for is to move the cars over so they're not directly in front of the house. Right. So we're right. asking for a one foot uh, driveway variance. Actually, well, three feet. Well, three feet, three. right. It's yeah. four feet, right. and we want to reduce it down to and one you're foot. And going all the way to the left. Correct. Right. Away from the house. Away from the house, yes. <laughs> and and it, it should be noted that, oh. It should be noted that at, at last month's meeting, you had not properly notified the neighbors. You have since done that, and we have the receipts. Okay. Never know who lives in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> so okay. you gotta notice. So, so okay. So the neighbors have been. Everybody panicked, but the neighbors have been yes. notified. The, the neighbors have been notified. Okay. Yeah. So we're obviously so many bigger. I mean, and everyone knows this house. It was in very bad shape. And, uh, you need to talk about As right. everyone knows, this house was in terrible shape yeah. um, and really had to be gutted. And so the owners are fixing it up to be brand new. Does anybody have any questions? No, I noticed that the parking has been moved where it was kind of in front of the house and they've now shifted it over. So as far as the side as they could. Yeah, right. so I, I think it's a, a, a better layout what they presented last month. Right. Yes. Motion to approve. I second that. Let's let's see if anybody's here to speak on this first. Okay. Is there anybody here from the public to speak on uh, Osage Drive? Okay. Let's go, uh, so we'll have close the public hearing. Motion to close. The public. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Well, I can't motion it. So, so one of you. One motion of the to close the public. Hearing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Could I have a, a motion to a motion to approve? Um, a motion to approve. This variance. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we have some new. The way we're doing it now with our thing is we have some new business of the board. Uh, ZBA 0518, 34 Hamilton Avenue. <coughs> sir, sir. Watch the water. <laughs> sir, what, what, I don't know what you're doing. We don't take information at the meeting. So give it to, give it to Joe over there. Give it to Tell us what you're talking about here. Yeah. Do you have this? Yeah, this, this I'm going to thank you. Sir. Good evening, everybody. Um, this application was a result of a uh, legalization of some violations that existed in Mr. Pani's house in 34 Hamilton. It was a two family house. And there was some work that was done to severely define the two families, four years upstairs. Everything was updated. In doing so, um, the reconstruction of the rear of the deck was done incorrectly. Instead of staying within the legal, present legal setback, by the time they, they took away the old deck, if you go back to the other slide, it's much more indicative of what the problem was. Happy to. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If you, if you see the left drawing, you will see that the rear deck, which is what's in question, uh, went all the way uh, to the corner of the house. It is now rebuilt that way, but wider, deeper. So in changing the, um, the existing condition, we did not respect, the owner did not respect the new side yard, which was 12 feet. 
We simply built it to the old footing that used to be there, which is five foot something or six foot four. So uh, that was legal then when the house existed in the early 1900s. In rebuilding the house, we should have honored the 12 foot setback, but we did not. And he simply followed the old foundation and, and uh, we built it in the same alignment with the uh, edge of the house. And that was the mistake. When we submitted the as built for the final CUO, obviously that showed up. So we're here to, in the hopes that we can be allowed to maintain that condition. And I've, I, I showed you the pictures because I wanted to see, wanted you to see the quality that uh, Mr. Pani built. He's a builder. This is his house, and uh, uh, it fits with the architecture of the area, the turn of the century. It's done quite nice. And in the back, they have a view, so the deck is really kind of almost, oh wow, yes, you can sit there and watch and see the river. And that's it, that's, that's the... So they're on the river side of the street? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I thought they were going to... There you go. Okay. So you also have uh, both side yards, uh, you have a variance for that too? Right, because the, the if you violate one side yard, right. of course, the two added together are not met. So it's the same, uh, it's the same error, but yelled out twice. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, you don't know the history of the house, but the back, the back now fits the historic uh, uh, architecture of the area. Um, there is a realtor that owns a house, three, three houses to the north. And he has it for sale, and I, I had to see it. I called up, right. nice gentleman, uh, right. show me the house. It was his father's, and he gave me the history of. And the back of the house is got the same porch, same idea. You sit in the back, drink a mint tulip. I think it was a mint tulip. Back then. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the river. But it was Showing your age, sir. And it was well maintained. That house is a beauty. Uh, All the houses. Are yeah, but that but that was it was well maintained. This house. Yes. Oh, yes. Beautiful. In the garden. Yes. Yes. Well, the back the back garden is messed up. It needs a little retaining walls and so on. But but that's. Uh, but she took care of it. But, that, but the main house is in good shape, and the attic could be converted. It's a beautiful attic. I'm just I'm not selling the house. I would like to <laughs> buy it. That's why I'm talking about. It. I wish I could buy it. But architects don't make much money. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anyone here to speak on 34 Hamilton Avenue? I would just like to mention one thing. Okay. Is, um, uh, Mr. Panny, this began as a violation. Going prior, to to I'm sorry. This began as a violation that um, a violation that had some issues with this home, and since uh, the violations were issued, I would say Mr. Panny has invested a lot of money in major repairs to this house, um, and it's done a lot of improvements. He did make an error in uh, in the porch and extending it further. It's not beyond the side of the house, but this, you know, he did extend the porch more than he was supposed to, and this happened during the construction phase because the original plan was to build, I believe, a rear porch in yes. compliance, yes. but um, he didn't was not aware that he had a setback requirement on the side, and the um, and the rear porch got built as you see in the pictures there. But um, he, I would say, he did spend quite a bit of money in improving this home, and has been a huge improvement in the last. So he has corrected the other violations yes. that he did. Yes, that's Any comments from the board? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor to approve the variances. Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. CBA 1018, 25 Cedar Lane. Applicant is seeking variances on bo both side yards and maximum impervious coverage for proposed subdivision lot. This property has been in front of us before. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair, I did want to just so the board is aware of this. The, uh, the variances that are being requested here were granted by this board uh, back in February of 2017. But it's the same request, but the, since the time ran out, 
the applicant has come back here essentially with a new application seeking the identical variances that were sought back in February of 2017. So you are aware that you can ask for an extension of your variances. I'm sure you're the architect or something, right? Uh, engineer. Engineer. I know. We'll just have to speak loud. Um, we seem to be having a mic problem this evening. Uh, yeah, I mean, we did have a meeting with the, uh, you know, the village attorney and the engineer. And, uh, you know, correspondent for a couple of weeks and it was decided that yeah, I should just come back with a new application. But for the future, I'm just saying. Okay. You know, because you can't get an extension on it. I think people need to know that too. I think, you know, the, the general public needs to know that once you get a variance, if we could just maybe put a little note on that. Sure. Well, I think the time, I mean, this is going back, you know, 15, a year. 15 months. So I yeah. think that the opportunity to uh, apply for an extension has had since. Right. Um, the two will expire. Right. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so just as um, the attorney had mentioned, um, Can you it? where. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Sully. I'll just get you open. That's fine. Um, just to say, um, I mean, this is literally a, a replica of what was. Um, proposed and variances granted um, in February of uh, 2017. <clears throat> so, you know, we're just, I guess, reinventing the wheel for lack of a better word. It's so it's two variances. Yes. For side yards and for impervious surface, right? Yes. And that's because you're trying to split the lot up. Which yes. One of them goes on to um, one of their entrances will be on Highland Avenue. Yes, future lot number uh, two is uh, <coughs> will front on the top. Do you have a purchaser for that property? I've always seen it for sale sign. Uh, I'm curious, that's a curious. Yeah, I, I think it's. I think the sign's still out there, but um, right now the owner's contemplating, uh, you know, make, keeping it for himself and oh. building. Yes, he's still deciding on that. Yeah, there is a still a sign out there. All right, so this is just actually giving you the same two variances that you had before that we issued to you before. Right? Yes. Is there anybody in the audience that's here to talk on the, the applicants of 25 Cedar Lane? Is there any questions on the board? No. no. We're doing that. We're doing the push So we'll close the public hearing. Do I have a? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? All right. We're getting used to this whole new Make system. a motion we approve the <laughs> extensions. Second. Or is it a new? No, no it's approve the variances. Just approve the variances. variances. So make a motion we yeah. approve the variances. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, 38 James Street. The applicant is seeking area events to conduct, uh, construct a two-car garage. This is an R. This isn't our buddy, is it? Is this another building? Or? No, it's the same one. It's the same one. Yeah, it's the same one. We, yeah, the Tesla guy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Three That's times. Not, not <laughs> Are you here? I'm a son. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you do not look here like you did. <laughs> <laughs> so you left. Yeah, you look like you've, you've gotten much younger. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so my client realized. Can you hear me? Uh, you just yeah, need to speak up. Yeah. I know. It's, we're going to have to have Hello? major surgery done. Whatever. Okay. I'll speak loudly. Um, the client decided, well, uh, the client realized the garage that you guys granted the variance for would be impossible to get into. So what he did is he rotated it and put it at the back of the property so he can get the cars in. But what happens is that now we need... The back is five feet away, but the sides, when rotating it, it becomes three feet 
on either side. So we need accessory side yard variants. This garage is the same size as the other one? Exactly the same size. Just the smaller one, not the rec room. <laughs> no, no, no. This is the 748 They're not playing badminton in this one. <laughs> no, no. Just put two cars in. <laughs> Tes Tesla one, Tesla two. <laughs> this one was. This one was. Yeah. He was going to leave this Teslas out in the street. <laughs> that, that was the uh, the big thing. No, not anymore. So 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 what so so the difference between this and the previous one is that where you put it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, we rotated it and put it to the back. So. Okay. So the back is five feet, which is fine, but. When we rotated it, the sides are three feet from the lot line. But the size of the structure itself is the It's exactly same. the same, okay. yes. It's a two-car garage. It's a two-car garage. Which storage space, correct? What's the physical dimension? Um, it's um, 34 by 22. No, I'm just asking because on the plan it shows two car garage plus storage. Right. Yes. Yeah. It does show storage over here. I see, yeah. I see an awful big storage area. Well, only because it was originally proposed for recreation. Oh, we know. We know what it was originally. But it was bigger. <laughs> right. 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 But this yeah. is basically a three car garage. Right. 34 by 22. 22 is the depth of a car. And mostly your 21, 22, 24 right. would be a two car garage. Yeah. Well, if you look at the bottom, see it says car one, car two. And what's, so, and what's no, it doesn't matter. That's, that's what it is in mm -hmm. terms of the size. Right. right, but he's only going to have a door for two cars. And what's the little, like, thing in the back? Halfway thing. <laughs> that would be a side entrance, I believe, if he wants to add. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, right. But I know the storage he wants. That's the door. We have a little yeah. shed on the side of the house. He wants to move all the stuff in from there. Into, into the storage space for more room to get to. So that's the other one car garage is storage. Right, right. So okay. what do you think? Yeah. What what amenities are in the garage as far as plumbing, heating, etc.? Only electric, just for lighting. Okay. No heating, no No plumbing. heating, no. The basketball court. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you do. You're in fear of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so so we're back for a third time. So I have a I have a question. I'll just be just a I guess a procedure question. Uh, the last time they were granted variances for uh, other issues such as impervious surface and stuff like that. But since they're requesting now these particular variances, do the other variances, since there's a little change in the project, have to be granted once again? So yes. and because the project did not start, so it, it says since I believe the last time it was approved, it's now past the six month term. Right. Yeah. So those variants have expired anyway. Right. It's gotta be at least six months. Yes. Well yeah, it's, it was uh, it would seem like you're absolutely correct. Right. So the other on the worksheet they show other variances that were granted at the time. They may not have changed just by rotating it, but I believe for the purpose of the vote, they, they have, have to, to be, be granted. Re Redone. Yes. So you need a new zoning worksheet, which would indicate all the different variances. The zoning worksheet was updated for this. Yeah, but you didn't apply for updated variances for that. Um, other than the location. Right, because so we didn't go over any of the previous variances. We didn't go not, over. Not the impervious surface or anything? No, we didn't. Okay. Because it was 100%, and we're actually bringing it back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, the old variances don't need you don't need them anymore. No. Well, she needs. Well, we well there are variances yeah, that are needed on the worksheet. Yeah. yeah. Look at the worksheet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, the house is still an old house. You know, stuck at the side of the property. You know, right. On a small lot. Um, With the exception of the accessory setback, all the other variances are identical to what right. this board approved in uh, June of 17. Okay.
Because these, well, these are the old houses that come over there. So we can just, the board can just basically put all these variances into. Well, she's got it on the worksheet. It's already on yeah, the worksheet, so there's no, there's, and, and again, they were already granted previously, right. so we can just put it in as part of the application. Again, uh, so I'll ask for my time. Is there anyone here to talk on 38 James Street? Do you want to talk? Uh, well, Come to for me. us. Oh. You have to give your name and your address. This is David Symmetra for 38 James Street. Our garage is mainly for the two Teslas that he has coming in and to make more space for our parking because right now I'm parking in the street. It's hard for me to park. And also the Teslas we wanted to put in the garage because my dad also has a 68 Mustang. That kids from the other side have been throwing rocks over onto our side. So he wants to keep the Teslas in there so that doesn't happen. Thank you. It's such a change in attitude. <laughs> Dramatic. He wanted to keep them on the street originally. So, yeah. Okay. That's right. There's an apartment next door. Yeah. yeah. And you realize that you really can't park in the driveway, which only fits a car, mm -hmm. right? It's not a it's not a parking driveway. So if you if you're not in the garage, you're going to be parking in the back. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So, uh, motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve the uh, variances for the for this for thirty. What is it? Thirty eight James. Thirty eight James Street. Motion to approve the variances for thirty eight James Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so ends. Uh, we have the minutes. Oh, we do. So is that part where we go on to the next part? Now, one thing with regard to the resolutions, there's one additional resolution that was. Right, we have to wait till the one day. Okay. Okay. I bother. Can we just ask you to step outside only because you're in front of our camera? Oh. And we're still <laughs> conducting a meeting here. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Uh, okay. One, there's an additional resolution in the uh, in the packet that I gave to the chair, uh, and that relates to 65 North Malcolm. Uh, the board may remember that it previously approved a variety of variances for this property, which would be going to be converted from a one family to a two. After the uh, resolution was prepared, the uh, building department and the architect realized that he had not requested. Uh, a, uh, a side a driveway there a side dr a driveway yes. setback driveway right, setback. for four feet uh, which was pre-existing non-conforming so to be consistent with everything else that was granted uh, I prepared a resolution which readopts the May resolution that this board approved but also now adds one additional res one additional variance which is the four uh, the four feet for the uh, for the driveway setback so this driveway was already existing correct. Because it goes to the back of the house, what I remember, it goes to the back of the house, right. and you could park in the back of the house. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because part of the issue that the neighbors had was about parking, and we said, well, he can fit all mm -hmm. the cars in his backyard, which was already paved. Right. Okay. And uh, so that was, you added on that. One right. So variance. basically, the old resolution is still in effect. This just provides one additional variance to basically conform everything mm -hmm. uh, as we did with everything else. Does anybody have any questions on that? Motion to approve. So a motion to approve the minutes and the resolutions from our May meeting. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? I'm going to have stanks out in here at the last meeting. Right. You have an FMP. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, We'll see you at our July meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Again, we want to remind people that when they come before the Zoning Board of Appeals, they have had, they've had to go to the building department and the planning consultants and, and gotten all their checklists approved and everything. So no matter what date you would submit your paperwork, that does not necessarily mean that you will be on the next agenda if you don't have all your paperwork in order. 
We're working towards that. We're doing better. We're working with, I, I like this method. Does anybody have any questions on this system of doing each public hearing so we don't get confused and works. forget? It, it works. works. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful month. All right. Thank you. Yeah.